Okay, welcome to the inaugural episode of Barn Songs. We've got uh, Shadrach and Stephanie here from Bottom Shelf Bourbon. How are you guys doing? Good. Yeah, thank you. Good. Cool. Glad to have you guys. Thank you. Uh, how's the warm, warm-ish weather treating you? Yeah, it's good, man. Yeah, we got off the plane and it was uh, nice to, nice to feel it. Yeah, yeah thaw out a little bit. Yeah, it was like 16 degrees when we left, dumping snow. And <laughs> so yeah, it's always nice to see the sunshine for sure. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Feel it. Yeah. Feel it on your skin. Yeah, instantly happier. (laughs) Yeah. Today it got pretty like warm-ish, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Two o'clock. It's. It. I I don't know. For me, it's. It. It hasn't been so long that I forget. So, I think for somebody that maybe like doesn't get down here a whole lot, like be like, wow, like. Yeah. It's like super like exciting. Yeah. But coming down as much as we come down, it's like yeah, there it is. Yeah. Yeah. A little it's, bit of old hat. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. 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 But I mean, that's I'm not trying to downplay the the awesomeness of it. It's just traveling yeah. to summer. Yeah. Summer's yeah. The best yeah. Thing. <laughs> right. Um. I just thought of it. So moving up there, right? You're outside of Missoula. I think a lot, having come from the Northeast, and then coming here, wondering if I would be a different songwriter. Because coming from the Northeast, you know, again, it's, I don't know, to me it's sort of dystopian. (laughs) Just these big cities, and then cold winters, and all that, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, so all of my music kind of goes sad, right? And then I remember being on stage one time here, and thinking, man, if I'd grown up here, I might play pop punk. Or we have tons of ska bands and that kind of... Yeah. Do you feel any change living up there? Like, or have you ever thought of those yeah. kind of, in those terms? That's a good question, actually. Um, I definitely think, I, I, I can relate to, you know, the, the different locations that I've lived in. Um, not being from Arizona, but lived here for, you know, better part of 20 years. <clears throat> um that different songs that I've wrote and written over the years have definitely been regional. It used to be back in the day, like, you know, and I still do this, like, I want to find out where a band's from. Yeah. Because for some reason, if I find out where they're from, then I can see, I can... It makes more sense. makes sense to me, like, what their sound is going to be. For some bands. Right. And it's really not all that hap- like it that's not 100% anymore. No. Like you used to say, like if you're, you're like if you're from Detroit, like you knew they're from Detroit. Yeah. You know, you got the Chicago Seeger. Yeah. Like you hear Seeger, and you're like, like, of course that's where he's from. So you know, the, the regions have always kind of dictated kind of their sound, and um, you know, it's not so much the case anymore. I think because of, I don't know, maybe the internet or something, but um, I think that's a huge part of it. Yeah. Just having accessibility to everything yeah. at all times. So maybe it maybe for me, um, I don't think my songwriting has has regional ties to it. I think it has more of um, like chapters in okay. my life, I guess. Yeah. You know, like because when I was a kid, of course, everything you know, I hate you and blah blah blah, <laughs> right. scream punk rock and <laughs> yeah. and ah, let's go nuts, let's get wasted. Yeah, and you know, I'm still actually singing that, but um, so I think as I get older, the the subject matter changes. And, uh, but I, I, I don't think that we've been in Montana long enough yet to see a big difference in, in the songwriting. Because okay. we've only been there a year. Yeah. So it, maybe it hasn't hit. But yeah, I definitely could see that. I think things are going to change as far as the songs go. Yeah. I, I, I predict that. Yeah. And not I'm not going to do it intentionally, of course, because you know how it is. You don't really get to decide. On you want it to be as organic as possible. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you don't really get to decide, like, okay, I'm going to write a Montana song. No. Like, I, this this has Montana written all over it. That's recipe for a bad song. Right. <laughs> that is absolutely <laughs> recipe for a horrible song. So, it, if, like you said, if you can do it the, the most organic way possible, of course, it's going to come out naturally. And if we've been in Montana for, you know, five, ten years, and a song comes out and it's it sounds like Montana, well... You are what you are. Yeah. Yeah. You're a product of your environment. Of course. Yeah. Of course. So that's a good question, though. That makes me think about things. I like that. Yeah. Um, so what are you gonna play today? <clears throat> I'm gonna play a song called Olympia about okay. uh, my hometown of Olympia, Washington. Yeah. I grew up in the Northwest. Cool. Uh, 
Um, and the song, uh, you know, how did it come to you? Was it one of the stream of consciousness, very fast things? Well, or? you know, I don't know how other people really write songs. I don't really ask people. Um, because I, I kind of feel like it's kind of a personal thing. So it's, it's, it's totally. kind of a boundary I don't really like to to cross because I, I think that um, what works for some doesn't work for others. Of course. So yeah. for me personally, how I write a song is I usually come up with chords mm -hmm. that go together and, and you know the melody with the music. So right. I always write the music first. Yeah. And then um, basically what I hear from the music kind of dictates the subject matter, mm -hmm. or I'll think of a subject, uh, and, and then and then try to put the two together. Mm -hmm. And so to me, it just kind of came like organically. Like yeah. I needed to write this song about this town and um, you know the experiences there and all that stuff. And it just the I guess the music kind of matched the subject. Yeah, and that's how I always write. Cool. Yeah. Or I'll write a song and then I'll come up with a title. Yeah. And then I'll, with that title, I'll come up with the subject in, in, within that title, whether it's a true story or not a true story. Of course. Because uh, I've made up fictional uh, songs. Yeah. And then, you know, a lot of the songs, too, that might be um, true stories, but they're fabricated a little bit, you know. Yeah, there's, embellished. There's things, yeah, there's embellished and, you know, things added and stuff like that just because sometimes you just need a damn word to rhyme and <laughs> of course. that might not happen, <laughs> might have happened, but by, by God, you can't get anything else that rhymes with dang it or yeah. uh, whatever the case may be. Yeah. So, cool. Yeah. Cool. Um, last question. Ramones or the Stooges? Oh, Lord. Lordy, Lordy. <laughs> That is a tough one. <laughs> that is a tough one. We just actually watched a documentary on the Stooges. Give me danger. Yeah. That was good. Yeah. That was good. God dang. Do I have to answer it? It's well, tough. I mean, you could say tie. <laughs> <clears throat> Man, I'll tell you. Um, there's just so many different as aspects of what the Ramones had, and it, you know, really look. I mean, really, what are we looking for? Like accomplishments or like. Just for you personally. Changing, yeah. yeah. So, like, and I, and I think, I not only think as a musician, I think as, like, a businessman, too. I think of as a, uh, a wave creator. I think of, you know, uh, you know, the publicity of, you know, what the Stooges had did and gotten and the hell that they went through. And then here we got the Ramones that had their own problems, but they had a guy that was just, like, a drill sergeant and documented every single gig they ever played and right. how much they got paid and uh, was so anal about everything and that appeals to me too because you got to have a guy in that band yeah you know, that that is like that uh hopefully right that allows you a little bit of space so you know, i'm kind of going off on a weird thing but <clears throat> i'm gonna have to <clears throat> shit i just hate to say it <laughs> i hate to say it. that's a great one <clears throat> we can we can call it a tie let's call it a tie i gotta pick one do you want to? You want to hold off, Stephanie? What would you? <clears throat> no, I'll let. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say the Stooges. Okay. And the reason being is I'm because I liked, I like bands that cause chaos. I like bands that that dangerous. Dangerous. We don't have many of those right now. And the Stooges were so dangerous, and they were so unpredictable. Yeah. And they were so like we don't know what's gonna happen. I mean, they literally imploded, and. Their music was so basic, which I'm a huge fan of, like, it's not how many notes you can hit in, you know, a minute. Right. It's what can you produce. That vibe. Yeah, and so the Ramones yeah. were geniuses at that, too. You yeah. Know, that three-chord, go. let's get it, and, yeah. and, and make a, a good pop song. I mean, they were basically a fast pop band, is all they were. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <clears throat> and the Stooges were um, a circus. Yeah. So I have to pick Stooges just for that aspect only. I think the musicianship is probably about even across the board. Ramones were definitely more um, profitable. They, they, you know, they, of course, they, went, yeah. they got a lot better. close. Yeah. So, um, but yet again, to me, that doesn't that isn't that's not success. Success is when people are talking about you, going that guy. Yeah. Like blew my mind. Yeah. And Iggy was just. Yeah. That guy. Yeah. And their story's awesome. I love the story. 
Yeah. And, and I think that it's very, very ironic that he was the biggest train wreck out of that whole group, and he's the only one alive. Yeah. He's the only one alive out of that whole band. And still do, putting out good records. Yeah. I, and I gotta say, like, a lot of his solo stuff I'm not into. Like, okay. I don't like it. Like, he, like the 90s, he was just like, he was just trying to get heroin money. Yeah. And he was just putting out anybody who would tell him to do whatever. I think right. he was... So, I can't even say that I like Iggy's whole collection, but as far as going back to the Stooges, that was some good stuff. And it was... Also, they... I think they're a good five years ahead of anybody else. Oh, yeah, you definitely. Know? I think they were... Even though... I think MC5 maybe got a little bit more um, accolades, but I think they were better than the MC5. And I, and I think they took yeah. MC5 and they took that and ran with it and did it better. Yeah. And they didn't get political like the MC5. Right. They got very Course. political yeah. and they kind of made it more rock and roll and, and just debauchery. And so that stuff's appealing to me. That sort of thing. So I would have to say Stooges, and I hate to say that to get some Ramones because Ramones were one of my favorite bands, but. I'd have to give them, give them that. Well, I agree. I agree with you. Yeah. So I felt cool. <laughs> you got that. It's cold. If I can't be here, I'll just roam. When I see them evergreens through the sweet shield of broken dreams, the love I've lost. Shots of shot and close in time. I'm always lost. So I headed down south near Mexico and over through Texas, went up through Oklahoma. And I'm coming hot from the stars up in Washington. Just let me light and we get by and let me up. Just let me light. Oh, my God. 